Hi, I'm Alex. I am a PhD student at Old Dominion University studying human factor psychology. I chose this major for a couple of different reasons. I actually took a few years off after my undergraduate degree in psychology to work and I worked in the health and beauty industry. I ended up getting a management position and it made me start to think about things like training and selection and also leadership qualities and I thought wouldn't that be a really interesting thing to study. So I started looking into industrial organizational psychology programs. I also had been out of school for a while so I decided to go ahead and get my master's degree in experimental psychology here at Old Dominion. I ended up getting matched with a faculty advisor who did some industrial organizational work, but mostly human factors. And I ended up falling in love with a lot of the research that he did. So that's kind of my path to finding human factors. I love teaching, so I am thinking about possibly teaching either part-time or maybe as an adjunct, but I also have the experience of doing outreach so educating professionals and businesses, not just students, on the importance of user-centered design and including the user in the design process is really important to me. But I also would like to work with creative teams to possibly design products that are more user-centered, maybe either in a consulting capability or maybe even working for the government. We end up taking a lot of cognition, perception, physiology courses but we also might take decision making, different kinds of psychology courses than you might be used to. So even though we take so social psychology, developmental psychology, we would end up needing to apply that to technology. So you might take a little bit more applied coursework and have more applied projects in your classes. So we might actually have to design a character that someone might use in an education setting. And then you can actually use that in a portfolio later. So it's a little bit different from other majors where you don't get to do some hands-on activities. You might also have to take courses in domain-specific areas such as medicine to learn about the medical field or maybe aviation to learn about how pilots do their job. But then we would also take courses specifically geared towards human factors. So methodology courses, statistics courses, human computer interaction classes, and also ergonomics and occupational safety and health. My favorite part of being involved in human factor psychology, probably the toys which you can see behind me here. There's a ground vehicle that we developed here in my lab. There's also a robotic arm, which is actually guided just using hand gestures. So we get to play with some really cool toys. There's an eye tracker in this lab that we get to use. We can use tablets, even website design. We get to be involved in that. We have virtual environments, serious games, all kinds of really cool gadgets, and you won't get to to do research with those types of things in pretty much any other major. So I love the toys. I think one of the biggest challenges uh, facing students and professionals in the field of human factor psychology is that we really have to bridge the gap between engineers and psychologists. So we have to be experts in psychology but also be pretty much experts in whatever engineering we need to know. So it takes a lot of computer science knowledge, maybe more than you really realize coming into it as a psychologist. In addition to knowledge of computers and technical things, it also requires expertise in certain domain areas. So you might end up having to learn a lot about the medical field or maybe how surgeons do their job so that you can design a simulator that's best for them or you might have to learn a lot about a pilot and what goes into their job. So we don't have to just be experts in psychology, whether it's cognitive psychology, social psychology, but also experts in different domain areas. So that can be challenging, but also really exciting because it actually allows us to apply our knowledge of psychology to specific domain areas. 
I do wish that more people had informed me of all the kinds of career opportunities that are there for human factor psychologists. So we can work in a lot of different areas, whether it's government, academia, industry, even consulting. And to do any one of those jobs might require different lev levels of expertise and experience. So you can actually get a master's degree in human factors and do certain types of work that might be different than getting a PhD uh, and what doors that might open. So it's really important to look at degrees and what they can do for you career-wise and also what you want to do for a career. And that can kind of help gauge what type of program you want to get into, whether it's just getting a bachelor's or a master's degree or a PhD. I definitely recommend that students learn a little bit about the technical side of things, so maybe learning more about how a computer works at a basic level. Just having some kind of technical knowledge can really help you in your career path, um, even outside of, of human factors. But definitely within this field, it's good to also have a good grasp of technology. I also recommend taking some statistics courses or research methods courses because regardless of what domain area you go into or what career path you might have, research is a critical component. So understanding and appreciating research is really important. So definitely take some research methods classes and statistics classes. In addition, I recommend that you start thinking about technology in your daily life. So how do you interact with technology? What technology is designed poorly or really well and why do you like it? Thinking about how you can make products or technology or even workplaces usable, efficient, safe, but also enjoyable and beautiful uh, can definitely help you frame whether or not you want to go into human factor psychology.